All right, you already know what this is. Your boy Big Rich, Mob Stories, Shattered, Queens, on some late night shit, creeping. It's already one in the morning, trying to go to sleep. I am about to go to sleep, but I couldn't because this next story is all about. Yeah, it's not all about, but it, it, Queens, you know what I'm saying? Queens. Let's get right down to business. Frankie Lokes' last hurrah. A fancy new lawyer and Sammy Bull put wins in his sails. He was convicted alongside John Gotti in one of the most sensational mob trials in history. Sentenced to life in prison. He's done more than 28 years already. But at 86 years old and ailing, Frankie Frank Lacascio is still fighting for his release. And against steep odds, he is slowly making headway. Lacascio, who served as consigliere under Gotti, has gotten none other than Salvatore Sammy the Bull Gravano, Disgrazia, the government star witness at the so-called mob trial of the century, to back up his contention that he was wrongly convicted of the murder for which he had been behind bars for more than 28 years. In addition, Lacascio has also landed a distinguished Harvard Law School professor who retired from the federal bench in 2011 to argue on his behalf that he had nothing to do with the crime of which he was convicted, the 1990 murder of Gambino soldier Louis de Bono. In a filing that asked the Second Circuit Court of Appeals for permission to contest Lacascio's murder conviction, Nancy Gertner, who sat on the Boston Federal Court bench for 17 years, wrote that she has received newly discovered evidence from Gravano. That evidence, says the former judge, attests to the fact that Lacascio was innocent of the murder that the government was aware of. The government was aware of the information but failed to disclose it. If she succeeds in convincing the Court of Appeals that Gravano's information, which is contained in a two-page affidavit, is newly discovered evidence that Lacascio had no prior access to, it would merely entitle him to file an unusual second motion to contest his conviction before Brooklyn Federal Judge I. Leo Glasser. Two years ago, the Second Circuit rejected an effort by attorneys Harlan Protas and William Callahan to rule that Glasser should have disclosed that his son was a federal prosecutor who was investigating the Gambinos before the Gotti case and returned the issue of Lacascio's innocence to another judge. In Gravano's affidavit, in Gravano's affidavit, Sammy the Bull wrote that Lacascio had no role in the planning of, nor did he participate in any way in the murder of conspiracy to murder Louis de Bono. Gravano wrote that he had told the government everything he knew about all crimes committed during the de Bono murder, but that he never mentioned it to the witness stand because he was told to only answer the questions that were asked of him. Gotti, Sammy de Bull wrote, gave the order to kill de Bono because de Bono was failing to show up for meetings with Gotti. As boss of the family, Gravano wrote, Gotti had the sole authority to make the decision to kill de Bono. He adds that Lacascio didn't agree with the Dapper Don's decision. That claim, Gravano points out, is backed up by a December 12, 1989 FBI tape recording where the, where the Dapper Don is overheard discussing his desires to kill de Bono. Frank predicts that de Bono will bring Gotti 50000 to appease the situation and calm Gotti down, Gravano wrote. But the Dapper Don rebuked the suggestion and stated, I won't take it, Frankie, but I should take it and more. That conversation, says Gravano, shows that Frank tried to save de Bono's life and he did not agree with it nor approve the decision to kill de Bono. In fact, Sammy the Bull added, shortly after this conversation, Gotti told me that he strongly resented Lacascio's suggestion that he take the money and forget about killing the Bono. In addition, and most memorable, wrote Gravano, was the fact that shortly thereafter I was promoted to the position of official underboss and Frank Lacascio was made a consigliere. 
It was clear that Frank's suggestion to Gotti and the Bono was one of the reasons why Gotti made the change in positions. We expect the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Office, which has opposed Lacascio's claim for decades, to oppose him at every stage of his latest effort to get out of prison. But with Gravano's strong affidavit and a highly respected new lawyer making those arguments, Frankie Loke may well have one more chapter in his own mob saga. Way to go, Frankie boy. Wish you the best of luck. Get the fuck out of jail, all right? So salute. Again, great article. By the way of Gangland, Jerry Capisci. Salute to you, sir. You already know how we do. Shattered, mob stories, big rich. Everybody have a good night. Salute.